perception is not always reality, but in recruiting, it does matter. The perception of Oklahoma State has definitely gotten some boost recently. This is the season where capitalization can turn perception into our new found reality. You are locked on Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, y'all, and hello, all. Welcome back to Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily stop for all things cowboy and cowgirl related. My name is Cody Stovall. I want to thank you kindly for stopping by to make this your first listen. We're available on all of your podcasting platforms, visually as well on YouTube. Find me personally on X at All Day O State. Other platforms like Facebook and Instagram, it's O State All Day. Make sure you go track me down as we jump into the news of Jalen Beckley becoming a Cowboy commit over the weekend. This is the same six foot five, two hundred ninety five pound offensive lineman that recently decommitted from Clemson and has all the offers in the world. Right perception has the opportunity to shift here, especially for Oklahoma State. Anybody really in the Big Twelve. But this is a season of change. It's also a season of capitalization. We all know Oklahoma State should be in the driver's seat to take the new conference and run with it. We're going to have a lot of competition. We're very well aware of that. But part of the perception when it comes to recruiting is if you don't get an offer from, let's say, a Texas or a Georgia or a Florida, then getting an offer from Oklahoma State or a Kansas State was the next best thing. And although there's still some of that that's going to be definitely valid throughout the recruiting cycles, one of the things that I'm hearing pop up in the seven-on-seven recruiting landscape that Oklahoma State offers that a lot of places do not is stability. Oklahoma State's perception for a long time was if you have really good coordinators, they're going to use Oklahoma State as a launching pad to take bigger jobs. Now, you did see that to some degree with Jim Knowles, But Ohio State is always going to be a bigger job than Oklahoma State. They're always going to pay more money than Oklahoma State. But when it comes to shifting of perception, this is a massive season, not just for Mike Gundy. I think Mike Gundy's big test was last season. He passed that. This season, the changing of perception comes down to not just the success, but what we have to sell. We have a lot to sell right now at Oklahoma State. Even though we don't have a spring game, there's a lot that is uh, being maneuvered right now, and it's all sellable. But when I'm talking about the perception of Oklahoma State in recruiting and how we've had to redevelop some relationships in the state of Texas with some high school, some coaches, and some of the recruiting and scouting services, it's just about getting the right people into your university and then utilizing them properly. And if you are going to change, the method to their utilization, at least make it make sense. Give every player the opportunity to make the most of a situation and then be also understanding and willing to be helpful when you may see that a player has has reached his max. If he's been somewhere for four, five, six years, you can be the, the, I don't know, the beneficiary of helping kids navigate the best future for themselves. But part of that for Oklahoma State starts with the high school recruiting landscape. And I think Jalen Beckley is another individual that proves that Oklahoma State can recruit with the best of them. This would be a massive get for Charlie Dickey. But I think this stems back to last season. I think the emergence of Landon Cleveland as a legitimate threat to come be a cowboy As that grew, it also strengthened that DFW area-style connection, not just through Landon Cleveland. We've talked about how Jonathan Agumidu and Gunnar Wilson and that whole crew, Armstrong Notum, David Cabongo, they were all able to kind of tie in together. Well, I think Jalen Beckley, being from the same area, offers the same kind of platform. And this is going to be great for perception. If we continue to enhance the perception within the coaching circles of the state of Texas and beyond, 
If we can show them, if you come to Oklahoma State, this is our vision for you to come to Oklahoma State. But once you do get here, playing time, or at least the ability to compete for playing time is not going to be a major issue. You having some some understanding and familiarity with the, the staff and the brotherhood, the cowboy culture, that's going to allow you to make that your foundation, which is why people typically find success outside of just playing football at Oklahoma State. We have something to offer that not everybody does. Some of that is the consistency and the continuity in the staff. Some of that is Rob Glass. Some of that is the innovations that we're doing on defense right now that's going to make it very alluring for any defensive end or linebacker or tweener that's kind of looking to fill that Von Miller, Miller style role. We talked yesterday about John Schobel and how he would be a massive get for this Oklahoma State defense. We've also talked about how if you get Brian Nardo in living rooms, we're okay there. If you get Tim Rattay in living rooms, we're okay there, which is why having the opportunity, Adam Schobel is a possibility. And these are the type of individuals that can catapult a class from a composite 50, 60, whatever, to the 20s and 30s where Oklahoma State should always live. Now, you guys know, I think the 2020-24 class could potentially go down as one of the greatest classes in Oklahoma State history. I think that you're getting size that typically you have to build up via Rob Glass at Oklahoma State as true freshmen walking in the building. We're getting six foot four, 230 pound linebackers that run four, five, four, six, forties. The guys that used to be designated for the SEC are the guys that are now finding their way to enjoying their trips in Stillwater, to enjoying that everything there is to offer. And again, if we have the best PWO program and we have the best scout team, it allows us to do some of the things that we're doing right now, which is why what we're selling in the spring is massively beneficial for every kid in the country to get their eyes on. What we're able to do, it should be able to be replicated year in and year out. That's what we're trying to build. The beauty of it is you have the foundation. And more often than not, it doesn't take a foundation long to, to get something set right and then pick up and move on. You're not getting that a lot of Oklahoma State. Outside of Jim Knowles, most everybody else is staying put, which is, again, why we have coaches that have been here for seven years, nine years, 14 years, 12 years, like it's normal. That's not normal. So we have a lot to sell. I think we're just seeing the beginnings of that next hard shift. If Oklahoma State is going to be one of the clear kings of the new Big 12, and the Big 12 is clearly going to be one of the kings of the power three movers and shakers of college football. That's going to drive all sports, which is going to make Oklahoma State alluring no matter what. If you're a multi-sport guy, I mean, I know Jalen Beckley is. It's He's not just a six foot five, 295-pound dude that happens to play basketball. You're hearing his cerebral makeup being brought up a lot. But he's a team-first guy. You see that in the highlights with basketball, too. He does the little things that show you that he's not just out here to collect accolades. He's just not out here for personal improvement. He will do whatever's necessary, play whatever position necessary, take whatever role he needs to on a court or on the football field or in the classroom to excel. Now, you got to give a shout-out. He was just on uh, RA's little radio show thing. And Robert Allen mentioned he has the mental, cerebral capabilities to play almost every position on the line. And again, I think that traces back to his athleticism. But beyond that, even, it's his team first mentality. He's had opportunities to go everywhere, which is why he's got offers from all of your SEC heavy hitters, your LSUs, your Georgias, Clemson, obviously, Florida, Florida State, the plethora of the Big 12, Big 10. It doesn't matter. He's that style of guy. But it's because of some of these camps, these college camps and circuits. His name caught wildfire. Now, luckily, he has a lot of highlights to, to validate it. But what the next level sees in this kid is something that fits perfectly in Stillwater. So you see guys like David Cabongo and Landon Cleveland, Trey Griffiths. And then we've already got uh, the, the future king of elusivity himself, Madrill Lopez. 
Now you're adding somebody like a Jalen Beckley. If you throw in an Adam Schobel or a John Schobel, or if you sprinkle in a, a Juan Million Aguilar, and then you tiptoe along with Tatum Deuce Bell, the 2026 class, swoop up somebody like a Tatum Evans, you're building something in Stillwater that is easily sellable outside of just what you have right now. We're selling packages. We're selling opportunities that not everybody's going to be able to, to do. Even if you run the same defense, which nobody's going to run the same defense. But even if you did, the fact that Oklahoma State's at the forefront of what we're doing and the different ways to find interchangeability between the cornerbacks and the safeties and the linebackers and the defensive ends, it's going to make coming to Oklahoma State on that side of the ball a super sexy pick. We're just right at that juncture of knocking the door down between making this new perception a constant reality. To me, everyone's just waiting on that further validation of we're not going anywhere. So if we make another trip to Arlington and we continue to do what we're doing in this spring, we're going to be fine. You too will be fine in the financial department with FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA, and if you're into the hockey action, baseball is obviously in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks back in bonus bets guaranteed. That's 150 bones back in your wallet or your pocket, win or lose. You can bet on everything from a slap shot to a home run to a slam dunk, and it's all on the app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Do not wait any longer. Make your pocketbook feel right today with FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make your next bet, your best bet, shift it into automatic mode with the W because FanDuel provides these opportunities. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. It is America's number one sports book, so you should join in on the fun. All right, so again, this is a season of capitalization. Capitalization can grow legs and grow those legs can grow in the recruiting because the conversations that have happened traditionally about Oklahoma State, they are shifting. This is an opportunity to kind of galvanize our, our flag as the future staple of the Big 12. Of course, not to disrespect Utah and Kansas State and Arizona. And Iowa State's going to be deadly at times. UCF's going to be deadly at times. Uh, Houston's not going to be down forever, especially with Willie Fritz there at the helm. So the Big 12 is going to continue to be a juggernaut to get through. But you got to you gotta hope that part of getting through the juggernaut of the schedule that is going to be the Big 12, top to bottom, it should put you in a better position to make a little bit of a deeper run when it comes to playoff time and postseason time. Obviously, health is of paramount concern, but part of health is having the right amount of depth. To build the right amount of depth, you do have to have some boosts in recruiting. So although we don't have a spring game, we're selling something at Oklahoma State that is rare. Again, this defensive packaging, it's wild. The versatility in and of itself that that provides is going to make this place very appealing. But again, not just for recruits, for, for some of the, the scouting and training individuals as well. The seven-on-seven -seven circus are designed to help individuals understand the, the basics of whether it be route running or, or how to settle down on his own or how to manipulate different portions of the defense to get what you want out of them. There's no manipulation necessary if your capital is up, capitalizing. OU has always done good in recruiting because they were always to sell, able to sell. If you come here, you will have the opportunity to win a Big 12 championship every single year. We may not win them all, but you're going to have the opportunity to play in the biggest games in front of the biggest crowds more often than not. And we were able to do far more than Texas over Mike Gundy's tenure at Oklahoma State. So other than the 40 acres, it was never anything necessarily on the field that Texas had over us. But what OU always had over us was more games, more film, more highlights, more opportunities, more scouts, more trophies, more everything. Somebody in the Big 12 is going to reap those same benefits because the Big 12 has done nothing but continue to elevate 
themselves, thanks to Brett Yormark and the bright thinking. Now, with the craziness happening in the ACC, that's more to sell. And you don't have to sell negativity. You don't have to tell anybody, well, you don't want to go there because, you know, Louisville might not have a conference or Duke might, you know, be looking for a new place to do business. You don't even have to do that. The perception is the Big 12 is in a very, very stable position. Even if it does go to the two-division shift, this is, again, where perception for Oklahoma State is going to continue to have the opportunity to shift. If it's the two division split, the perception that Oklahoma State's part of that is going to continue to get bigger with capitalization. So it's not just about you know capitalization because you have twenty plus returning starters back or ninety percent of the roster, or because of the body by glass development being top three ever last season and here and likewise this season as well. It's not just because the the leadership in the locker room is light years different than we sometimes. You could even say the leadership in this locker room might be as good as 2021. These are all things to sell. So as much as I would love to hoot and holler about not having a spring game is a travesty because it is. Part of it being a travesty is you're not showcasing enough to enough people. But that's actually happening. Because when one circle talks to another circle and they, they go to these high school coaching clinics, the conversation seems to shift it. Like, hey, you remember the sales pitch you heard from Oklahoma State four years ago? Well, maybe you didn't like this part of it or that part of it or, or something about Gundy or Dunn or X, Y, Z. It's different now. And it's more player-led than ever. As Gundy's house is on the market, well, that might be because this is the season Mike Gundy's always wanted to get Oklahoma State to. Maybe this is the season that he always envisioned Oklahoma State could maybe have. And realistically, maybe even Mike Gunny didn't think that Oklahoma State playing in a playoff would someday become a very realistic possibility. But here we are. We're living in it. We're basking in it. Jalen Beckley clearly sees the lay of the land. So now we just need to show it to the rest of the country. Whether it be getting these unofficial or official capacity visits in, so players can see this, and so they can talk right there on the sidelines with each other and say, what is happening? Are you seeing other places do this? Are you seeing this, this kind of packaging anywhere else? How many other places can pull this kind of packaging off? So there, there's a little bit of boldness to what we're doing. I mean, it's bold not to have spring game. But if perception continues to get better, and then this season, people realize that the perception of Oklahoma State has now shifted into the expectation of a new reality, the new reality being competing for a Big 12 title every single year in the Big 12 is expected. And if you do compete for a Big 12 title every single year in the Big 12, you're going to have an opportunity to play in the playoff. Again, that's more games, that's more opportunities, that's more highlights, that showcases in front of a national audience. The things that the SEC and the Big Ten have always been able to sell are now some things that you can sell in the Big 12. Those used to be pretty exclusive to OU in Texas. Even if it wasn't fair, there was a perception. And perception was, if you go to Texas, you get all the bells and whistles, you get all the NFL-level development, and then you get the most opportunities to go to the NFL. Yeah, but if you're only winning seven, eight, nine games, you're not competing for titles. You're not playing extra games. You're not in front of the eyeballs. You're not in front of those top five, top ten games on a yearly basis. But got to give credit in one layer to OU. That was something they were able to capitalize on from a salesman perspective. They were always in the conversation. Playing for a conference championship was always a possibility. Even their down years, they still expected to be right there. That should be Oklahoma State. We all know that. This is a turning of the tide. Recruits and families and parents and coaches, they're starting to see that there is a shift in Stillwater. There's a little bit more of a seriousness when it comes to an Oklahoma State offer now. And we've never given out offers willy-nilly. 
Sometimes we should maybe be a little bit more aggressive on the offers that we do give out. But again, this is part of perception. If you get an offer from Oklahoma State, it's a big deal because we have gone through you with a fine-tooth comb. We're not just jumping on everybody who's athletically dominating just because. We do go significantly deeper. And it used to be that teams like OU and Texas would wait till right before National Signing Day, and they would pick some of the top Oklahoma State guys that Oklahoma State over, not overvalued, but overanalyzed and got the diamonds in the rough more than everybody else. Now Oklahoma State is starting to see more of your quote-unquote heavy hitters in recruiting take Oklahoma State more seriously. Uh, guys, Tatum Evans, I think, would like Stillwater, Oklahoma much better than Notre Dame. These are the conversations that we're legitimately having now. Oklahoma State has way more to offer than a TCU or a Baylor or a Houston right now. Kansas State's going to be close. Utah's going to be close. Arizona's nipping on our heels. But again, this is why I've been stressing this is a moment for capitalization, not just as a fan base, not just for all the 100 million seniors that have returned, but this perception is waiting for the same thing we are as a fan base, and that's to see the other side of the mountaintop. I don't even necessarily think we need to win the Big 12 this year. I, I hate saying this out of my mouth, but I do think that even if we made it to Arlington again and lost, it still would be quite enough validation for most recruits. Naturally, I want more. Okay, give me the trophy. This is the year for it. And if that does happen, I think you're going to see more Jalen Beckley-sized boosts in recruiting. Because the reality has now sunk in. This is what's the expectation in Stillwater now. So you're not just going to be a fringe two-star diamond in the rough guy. We're still going to find plenty of those because recruiting services have shifted a lot to evaluation of transfers and all that stuff. So there's still going to be plenty of opportunities to get the diamonds in the rough, the Deshaun Browns and the Taiwan Rays out of the high school ranks. But what we're building allows us to both be a destination for transfers and, more importantly, high school kids. Going to a, a JUCO was about development to get another shot at D1. Well, now, if you have Rob Glass and you're coming out of high school, whatever misconceived notions you had about the development of going somewhere first, those become less and less valid. And if we are, in fact, trying to build the best PWO program in the Big 12, that will catapult us to the top of the conversation year in and year out. That is when we see these boosts take hold every single year. Oklahoma State should live around 24th, 25th in the country every single year in recruiting. We haven't been. I think the last couple classes are shifting perception. Mike Gundy himself and how we've orchestrated the staff has shifted perception. Now it's the time to galvanize that perception and make it a reality. All right. Before we let everybody skedaddle on off of here, you have seen Javal, Javon Small and the portal. Enter the portal. I know words are hard for me today. I appreciate you bearing with me. I do have some concern here. Because every player did talk to Chad Weiberg after the news of Mike Boynton's departure, and they all agreed to be open and honest and upfront and willing to sit down with the new coaching staff. Well, as Steve Lutz is still building his staff, he is the guy, and he's already given a very, very clear indication on what next, se next season is going to look like. Not from a wins and losses perspective, but from a hustle, tenacity, accountability perspective. You know, I'd said uh, numerous times that Mike Boynton's biggest issue is he was too buddy-buddy, right? He was too much of a player's coach. Being a player's coach is usually a great thing, but the downside of being a player's coach is it's hard to draw that line. And when it's time to draw that line, it makes the boot camp mentality a little bit more difficult for everyone to grasp. Steve Lutz is bringing that boot camp mentality into Stillwater, the Eddie Sutton style of defensive, 
hard nose, dive for every single ball, be more conditioned than everybody else, put up more shots than everybody else, dive for more, more loose balls than everybody else. That is what he's bringing back to Stillwater. That doesn't suit everybody's game. And I do think that the announcement of Javon Small's name entering the portal after his meeting with Lutz would lead us to believe it could be somewhat problematic. But I think most of you guys, like me, feel that if this is the brand of basketball we're going to get back to, that this rebuild, with or without certain players, is going to be fine. If you can get a Bryce Thompson back with a Brandon Garrison to go alongside a Jamiron Keller and uh, Connor Dow, and then you got the, you, you got some some Brooks Manzer action in here, maybe, it, as far as helping and developing, whatever it may be. That could be huge. And that will give the injection back into Gallagher Iba that we all love. Because the accountability that's already permeating inside Gallagher Iba is something that we haven't really seen. Travis Ford was a player's guy. Sometimes a little too much of a player's guy, much like Mike Boynton. Brad Underwood was too much of a disciplinarian, so maybe you you got to find the even ground there. I think Steve Lutz is more on the old school side, but he's still connected enough to have legitimate conversations and motivational conversations with these players. So the players that will return, trust and believe they're buying into the fact that you're going to run 73,000 miles in accountability. You're going back to the Eddie Sutton tree. And for some players that may only have one year of eligibility left, they have one last crack at it. Maybe they want to go somewhere where they can, you know, feature 20 points a game, 24 points a game. And I'm not saying that that Javon Small cannot do that under Lutz in Stillwater. He very possibly can. But if I were to say that if there was a little bit of a cause for concern, it would be the fact that the meeting happened. And then he put his name in the portal. Still feeling good about Garrison. Eric Daly Jr., yeah, that's that could hurt. Uh, Keon, you know, he's meant a lot in Stillwater, so that's not going to feel great. But if we get either Javon or Daly back alongside with some of the other guys, we're going to be fine. And we also t- cannot miss the conversation happening behind closed doors of a couple uh, portal guys. We're going to get the brand of basketball that we've been yearning for, especially us old school individuals. So that may come with a little bit of tiptoeing, tiptoeing through the tulips on a, a player or two here and there. That's part of the process. I'm okay with it. I think you guys are okay with it too. If we get the brand of basketball, it looks like we might get. If we know that there's going to be plenty of blood, sweat, and tears, we can deal with some of the, the, the losses, right? I think Lutz is going to provide that. That doesn't mean it's everybody's cup of tea. All right, y'all. So we're going to have for this one right here. I, I hope I'm your cup of tea, or at least your cup of taters, because you know I love you. As always, God bless. Go Pokes. Thank you for tuning in to make this your first listen here in Locked On, Oklahoma State. You could be anywhere. So happy you choose to be here. All right, y'all. Until next time, go like it if you like the daggone thing. Dislike it if you don't, that's okay too. Share, comment, subscribe. Those are massively beneficial. My podcast and folks, do what you do. Leave a review, hit the stars. Later, taters.